this video is being filmed in August 8th of 2023. We're about six weeks out from the implementation of the very new remote ID ruling from the FAA. Remote ID is a new program from the FAA where there have to be electronics on your drone RC model airplane. The tracks where it, it tracks where it flies to include information on the flight, takeoff location, the remote ID can be installed in the factory for certain drones. You can get a module that is still being developed. And there's another aspect called FRIA, which is an FAA recognized identification area where if your club has a FRIA granted by the FAA, you do not need any electronics whatsoever to comply with a remote ID ruling while flying as a recreational pilot in a FRIA zone. So recently I did a video on the new um, website by the FAA called the UAS Data Delivery System. This is going to be a very comprehensive map and database that will show graphically just about everything that a drone operator, RC model pilot, needs to know about restricted airspace, controlled airspace, FRIAs, basically where you can and cannot fly your RC model airplane. <clears throat> this is a huge database. We're going to demonstrate it here in a second. It's got a bunch of uh, different layers and the, the database is still being developed. It is not complete yet. One of the things, even though it's called the FAA FRIA database, the FRIAs, the FAA recognized identification areas are not shown yet on this UAS data delivery system. They're just not there yet. FRIAs were started to be issued by the FAA in uh, the second week of July 2023. <clears throat> it was late. It was hung up for a bunch of internal Washington, D.C. reasons. We do know that clubs are getting their FRIAs issued. I don't know how many. There's about 2,500 AMA clubs out there that could be requesting FRIAs. And the date when you have to have it um, to, to comply with the remote ID is just about six weeks away, September 16th, 2023. So in a technical sense, FRIAs don't exist today in August of 2023 because the remote ID ruling does not come into effect until September 16th. I think at some point FRIAs will be shown on the UAS data delivery system, but they're not there right now. What are there are little blue circles. And when I did my recent video on FRIAs and this data delivery system, somebody pointed out that these are um, RC pilot fixed sites. And so the question came up, what is a fixed site? And I'm pretty sure I've got the answer on this, doing a little bit of research. Let me back up just a little bit to, to show you where the FAA is thinking and the fixed sites, how they relate to controlled, uncontrolled airspace, and then later on remote ID. The subject of fixed sites and remote ID are two completely separate topics. They have nothing to do with each other. So from the FAA's website, there was a publication that they, the FAA put out on May 16th, 2019. That was four years ago. And what it did was the FAA was highlighting the changes of coming down the pike for recreational drones. What had happened was in the 2018 FAA Authorization Act, there was a whole laundry list of things the FAA had to do to get their arms around all these hobbyist drones flying in the national airspace system. That's where remote ID really became born as a thing that was a must do for the FAA. But the other thing in tandem with the remote ID process, developing a rule, figuring out what it's going to be, notice of proposed rulemaking and so forth. The FAA at the same time had to deal, wrestle, understand, come to a, to, to a conclusion on how they were going to con um, consider controlled and uncontrolled airspace for drone operations. Again, controlled and uncontrolled airspace. The vast majority of all airspace in the United States is either controlled or uncontrolled. There are some exceptions with restricted military areas. Essentially, controlled airspace is airspace set aside by the FAA where they have air traffic control responsibilities. The small amount of uncontrolled airspace, generally called Class G airspace, is uncontrolled airspace. The FAA doesn't operate any control authority in there. And as a general rule, the FAA just doesn't care if you operate your drones in there because it is uncontrolled airspace. So reading from this uh, 2019 document from the FAA, um, it says, this is again 2019, well, recreational RC pilots may continue to fly below 400 feet in uncontrolled airspace without specific certification or operating authority from the FAA. 
They are now required to obtain prior authorization from the FAA before flying controlled airspace around uh, airports. Furthermore, they must comply with all airspace restrictions and prohibitions when flying controlled and uncontrolled airspace. So before that, the, the RC flying was small enough and usually at clubs, what would happen is an RC club would just simply have a letter of agreement with a local airport that had controlled airspace that says, hey, we've got a club here, we're gonna be flying in the club airspace, we'll be below 400 airspace, that was good enough. Now, with all the drones and the increased traffic, the FAA needs absolute permission for you to fly in controlled airspace before you can do that. You just can't have a letter saying, we'll be doing it when we're flying at our club. There's various computer programs and apps that are doing this since 2019. What I'm trying to lead up to is this idea of understanding and giving permission for RC pilots to fly in controlled airspace is what a fixed site is for the recreational flyer. So a recreational flyer fixed site is simply a pre-approved location of a club that is flying their RC models in or very near controlled airspace and will give dimensions of where they can fly in this airspace. I'm gonna show this here in a second. This is different than remote ID. Whether you're in uncontrolled airspace or controlled airspace, you need remote ID. The FAA doesn't care whether it's remote, uh, whether it's controlled or uncontrolled. Again, recreational fixed flyer site is essentially pre-approval permission from the FAA to fly your RC model airplane in or very near controlled airspace, and it has nothing to do with remote ID. The FRIAs have everything to do with remote ID. The location of the FRIAs on this map, I'm sure will come up at some point. I can even see it being a specific layer that will be a FRIA but we'll have to wait till we get closer to the September 16th date to do that. So let's take a look at the airspace around Nashville, Tennessee, and I'll demonstrate the location of Class C airspace and two um, recreational flyer fixed sites with details of where they fly and the altitudes that they're agreed to fly up to. This is the FAA's UAS data delivery system on a map. This is Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, notice that you have layers uh, on the upper left information, bookmark and draw. So on the right side, I've clicked layers. This is the layer list. I've deselected everything. There's nothing selected on the layers. Again, we're on Nashville and you can see the airport to the southeast of the uh, city. Now what I've done is I've clicked on the Class C. We're a little bit far out, but as we zoom in, you can see the circle. It is the Class C controlled airspace for Nashville Airport. Pretty strict controlled air, airspace, and we need permission to fly in there if we're flying drones or RC model airplanes. A little bit tricky maneuvering around on the map, <clears throat> but what I'm going to do now is if you look in the upper, we'll go ahead and click recreational flyer fixed site with labels. You'll see those two little circles up there um, above the airport. Those are two fixed sites. We'll zoom in and you can see they're both located in parks, which makes sense. And if we click on it, there's information. This is the recreational flyer fixed site for a junior ROTC detachment. You can see it goes up to 200 feet because it's in the Class C airspace. We'll go ahead and click on the other one. Again, an RC club in a park is the Music City um, Aviators. This goes up to 400 feet for the POC. You go to the AMA club site. One reason the FAA likes working with community-based organizations, and there's that information on that site going up to 400 feet in controlled airspace. Now let's click on Class C again. You can see how both of these fixed sites fall within the Nashville Class C. Here is information on the Nashville Class C that goes up to 4,600 feet. In short, the fixed sites have permission to fly here within the Class C airspace. Thank you for joining me in this video. I think this is a little bit more information on recreational flyer fixed sites, how they um, operate. It's a controlled, uncontrolled airspace issue, completely separate from the remote ID uh, requirements and um, any uh, FRIAs, FAA recognized identification area that might be established at the same place at a later date. Thank you.